This is my Street Scrambler, and this is how it used to look one and a half years ago. Since then, I've ridden it on-road, off-road, in rain, in mud, during the day, during the night, long distances, short distances. I've jumped it, dropped it more than once, and I've customized and modded it. This is my 16,000 kilometer review of my Street Scrambler. Let's get it. G'day guys, welcome to Motorfields, I'm Rob Hamilton. Now before we jump into this, a couple of mentions. One, this is for the 2018 Street Scrambler, that is what I have. And also this is just about the bike, it's not so much about all the modding and all the customizations that I've done to it. I will be doing that separately in individual videos, one of the Pirelli Scorpion rallies, one of the Fox Shocks for example. But this is just mainly for the bike, just in case you guys are looking at buying one. Let's see how this thing is, a year and a half, 16,000 kilometers time. This is the video, baby. This video will be broken down into a few sections. The looks of it, comfort, the performance, handling, and then just like a few extras at the end and some common questions that I'm usually asked. And they're also timestamped in the comments for your ease. Please like and subscribe the video if you do enjoy what you see. There's plenty more coming, man. There's plenty more coming and I appreciate all the support. And also, if you have any questions, drop a comment and I'll reply. All right, let's get into this. We have so much to get through. Holy crap, we have so much. There's such a blank canvas for modding. If you're looking for a bike to just absolutely mod up, change up, do what you want with it, this is a fantastic bike to start with. From stock, I had people just pulling me up, just being like, man, that looks sick, eh? It is such a sexy, sexy machine. It has been a joyous experience customizing. There's so many damn parts that you can buy for this thing, both genuine and non-genuine, and it's forever, it's forever shifting. I don't think I'll ever settle on one sort of style for this, just because because I know that there are so many different options for this bike. The one thing I don't like is the Speedo. The Speedo kills me. I feel like it ruins the whole aesthetic of the bike. I hate the way it's angled. I hate the way it looks. It's big and clunky. It'd be mad if they just had a smaller one. There are there are a couple of options out there. I'm sort of sussing it out still, just with the whole, just, you know, you want to be able to still use your heated grips and all your trip comp and your traction and ABS and all that sort of stuff. So I want to be able to keep all that, but rid that damn Speedo and get like a nice little tiny one. You guys would know that I mount my speedo sometimes down below, down on the side, but if you tip the bike, that thing's gone, man, and you're pretty much screwed. So I've been trying to keep it up where it should be, but I still don't like it. That's why I've left that fly screen there, just to sort of hide it a little bit. I'm working on some options there, though. Again, customizing, man. And also the mirrors, the things are huge, man. They're like, bonk. Obviously, they do a fantastic job, but not for me. I ended up finding some cheap one off eBay fits under the handlebars, looks OEM, it looks sick. And also the plastic bash plate, it's absolutely useless. I cracked that my first time I went off-road. Oh. And I replaced that with a nice, delicious, custom one. Mm. But there are stacks and stacks of options out there for you. Protect that sump though, if you're going off-roading, man, just, I urge you, protect the sump, get a metal one. Oh, do it. The seating position of this is extremely comfortable. It's very neutral. You're not leaning too far forward or you're not leaning too far back. You're just in a nice, comfortable riding position, ready to take it off road or ready to go extremely long distance. Now here you can see my back is nice and straight. My legs are just nicely bent. As I said, it's very neutral. Now I'm five foot 10. I feel like if you were any taller than I am, you might start getting a little bit uncomfortable unless you jack the bike up a little bit. After riding long distances, my legs do end up cramping up and I sort of like throw my feet on top of the engine bars, stretch my legs out there, or like I stretch them backwards, I put them on the pillion pegs. But I feel like you might just feel a little bit cramped and your, your, your back might get a little bit sore as well just because you might be a little bit more hunched over. That's just my opinion. Other than that, it's one of the most comfortable motorbikes I've ridden. I've taken this thing nine and a half hours in one day, constant riding, and it was so fine. And yes, I was still extremely stiff by the end of that ride, but I feel like if I was on anything else, I would have been done the four hour mark. The seat I found is is comfortable, it's comfortable, it's fine. I have modded mine, so it is a little bit more comfortable, which I'll cover in another episode. But stock, straight off the bat, I think it's fine. The pillion, not so much so. My girlfriend rides pillion every now and then. And there is a little gap. There's a gap between the rider and like your butt. And usually you want to be sort of close to each other so you can hug the corners nicely and you're not just flailing. 
flailing about. You want to be nice and tight and hugging and, and all that sort of stuff. But with her, there's just that little gap and you, she doesn't want to sit on that gap. It's just annoying. And she wants to get nice and close as well. So she's all sort of hunched over. So her back starts getting sore after a while. And I've heard things about the British custom seat that that's actually way better for a pillion because you just it's just a bench seat. You can just slide right up and get all nice and tight there. The pillion seat is damn tiny as well. It's so, it's so damn small. So, you know, you can just imagine sitting on that for a while. You'll get pretty fatigued pretty quickly. The standing position on this is incredible. I feel like the tank shape and the exhaust shape, the way everything's cut out, allows for your legs to grab the bike, which is what you want while standing. You can just sort of move the bike around wherever you want. And it just gives you a lot of control in that movement while you're standing. Even the stock bars, I kept the stock bars just because I feel like they're a perfect height for me. Standing up, everything's just so nice and it's all just there. The handlebar width are 835 millimeters, which I feel like is a nice, it's a nice stance for a scrambler. You can still lane split and everything fine. The bar height and position is perfect for my body. I can just sit on this thing so comfortably. It's actually incredible. So I've kept the stock bars on there for that reason. I've even powder coated them. They're in baby, they're staying, they're mine going anywhere. The seat height on these are 790 millimeters. Now I have taken the Scrambler 900 out and they're a little bit higher at around 825 millimeters and that is noticeable. I wish, I do wish the Scrambler, the Street Scrambler was a little bit higher. It just, it just feels like you've got a little bit more control and it feels like it's actually, you know, a bit more off-road capable. I think you can rise these but it's not a massive deal for me. It's just, it'd just be nicer if it was just that a little bit higher, same height as the Scrambler 900. Another cool thing about the foot pegs though is that you can and take the rubber inserts out when you do trailing so that you don't slip off your peg when you're chucking those sick wheelies, man. The tires that come stock on the Street Scrambler are the Metzler Tourances. I feel like they're, they're fantastic on the road, man. Like you just get them and ride them and boom, away you go. Hook around some corners, you're not gonna have any issues at all. Even in the wet, the wet will find. Off-road is another story. They're just, they're made for light trails, which I feel like the bike is made for anyway. That's not, it's not made for any serious off-roading. For myself though, I wanted something a bit more aggressive looking. So I went for the Prelli Rally Scorpion STRs and they're fantastic man. I love these things so much. So much so that I put my second set on. Hook around the corners, no problem. Never had an issue in the wet either. And in the dirt, man, they just bite in and they grab and you actually go. Now assisting with the tires are the wheel sizes. So at the front you have a big old 19 inch to help you get over some of those rocks and some of those divots. At the rear you get a 17 inch. The handling on this bike is just so damn refined. You don't get any wobbles when going around a corner. You can sort of just start leaning, do your counter steer, push or pull, whichever way you want to go. And it's just that one push and then it gets you over and then that's it. You can pretty much just take your hands off and it'll just cruise around. Do not do that. Do not do that. The bike rides itself. It wants to go straight. It just wants to just keep you upright. It wants to stay up. You can feel the weight behind it, but it's it's a nice feeling. It's not like a little light thing where you feel like you're just gonna fly, fly off or something. It's just a really nice motion around every corner that you do. And it's damn fun, man. Damn it, it's fun. I love this bike so much. When you're taking it off-road, you wanna switch riding modes. You wanna get rid of that ABS and get rid of that traction so you can just have more control there. With the later models, you just have different ride modes that so just be off-road mode. For myself, I need to go through every time and turn traction off, ABS off. And then boom, away you go. It's pretty annoying. You can see why they put the modes in there. It's so much better. Off-road capabilities, it can do it. I don't think that this bike is an off-roading bike specific. I have had issues when I dropped it. I did snap the shift shaft internally. And that is because it doesn't have any foldable levers. Even my gear lever right now is bent. It's just bent just because I've dropped it on both sides a couple of times. If it's not something you really want to do all the time, but you just sort of like every now and then want to just go off-road and just have a little woo and then just boom, back on road again. Perfect bike, man. That's pretty much what I did. And then I fell in love with it and I bought a WR450. It got me there, you know? I just, I just had that itch and it just, it just, it comes in at 206 kilos, which is pretty heavy. That's dry weight as well. So you're looking at around, what, 215, 220 kilos when you're fully loaded up. And you're pretty low as well. So you remember, you're not as high as you would be on a normal scrambler. So when you start falling over, you don't have much time to sort of put your foot down and really just, and so therefore you might drop it. You might drop it a couple of times. You might just struggle getting it around. I like damn froth on off-roading now. It's hella fun, man. It can do it. It's capable. Riding in rain, I've never had an issue. Obviously, it's a naked bike. There's no fairings or anything like that. You're gonna get hella wet. There's no protection at all whatsoever. I've got the bark buses on, which help a little bit with keeping your hands warm, but for your legs and your feet and everything else. See ya, baby. <laughs> you're gonna get drenched. Unless you have a windshield, protect your chest a little bit. Other than that, no, you're done. You're stuck.
The later models though, they do have a rain mode, so that cuts a percentage of the power, I think it's like 30% or something, and that's to help keep the back wheel from spinning. Mine doesn't have it, got traction control, I've ridden the rain quite a few times, and I haven't, I just haven't had any issues. I really haven't, apart from getting wet, that's it. Riding this thing on the highway, when I hit 110 kilometers, I, I do search for a six gear. Some people don't, I definitely do. Is it a game changer? Does it stop me from riding on the freeway? No, it doesn't, not at all. I just feel like, you know, when you sort of roll off the throttle from 110 kilometers, it does pull back instantly. The engine braking is right there. But I feel like I'd sort of want it to just be cruising along a little bit more, just to feel like the engine's not working as hard. When we did our massive tour around New South Wales, I did change the sprocket size down to a 37 tooth from a 41, and that saved revs by about 500 RPM at 110 Ks, which saved fuel as well, which is perfect. The only downside is, is that you're dragging that clutch out to get moving all the time. Riding off-road was horrible. You just really, you work in that clutch, man. But if you're doing more highway riding than you think you will be doing off-road or city riding or anything like that, it might be worthwhile going down to the 37 tooth. Now in saying this, I had a hard time finding any different size sprockets for the 520 pitch that this stock chain is. So we went to a 525 and then that just opened up a lot of avenues. You could change the sprockets, you could get different colors, you could just, you know, go go damn crazy. The sprocket and chain I got are off the Bobber Black as well. So you can just literally order a Bobber Black, it goes straight on that 525 pitch and go crazy with your sprockets. The Triumph Street Scrambler is a 900cc parallel twin with a 270 degree crank angle which gives it that awesome... It is only 55 horsepower or 41 kilowatts. Uh, the later models are 64 horsepower and that's at 80 newton meters of torque at 3230 rpm. It's not a fast bike man. You'll get used to the power very very quick and therefore it is definitely approved by me to be uh, a beginner bike, 100%. You could definitely have this as your first like big boy bike. It doesn't feel slow. You feel like you're going fast and the thuddiness of the exhaust and everything just makes you feel really, really good. Powering out of the corners and everything like that. It's got a really nice bottom end, so torque and power off the line and everything, it is all there. So when you hit that top range, man, it just cuts out, hey. It flatlines, you got nothing, you have no go. If you ever reach a red line on it, you'd, you soon discover that you'd want to change gears way earlier and you'd be so much further ahead of yourself. But for this, come with me. I have this and I'm excited to be fitting it to mine. This, ladies and gentlemen, is a camshaft by TEC Customs. Is it TEC Customs? TEC. It's the TEC camshaft. Apparently, Triumph restricted the 900 engines because if they had this in it, it would be too close to the 1200 scramblers and therefore they wouldn't sell as many of the 1200 scramblers because there'd be, there'd be no point. You buy the cheaper one that goes as fast. So this camshaft is meant to increase the horsepower and just release the beast that is within the engine. It's all there. This is the restriction of it. This is gonna be done in my bike and I'm really, really keen on it, I just can't wait. So 55 horsepower is stock, man. I've done the Zards, I've done the Decat, I've got a K&N air filter in. I'll be doing a before dyno so I can see what it's at right now. And then I'll be doing an after and then be doing a tune as well. So we'll see, we'll see how this goes. Very, very, very interested and keen. But I, feel, I still feel like it's not gonna be a crazy fast or anything like that. It's not gonna be, you know, mind blowing. I feel like it'll just, just make the bike run like it should. Especially when you just hit around 4,000 revs, it's just gonna keep on pulling through till you hit red line, I feel. Hopefully, I hope. Keen though, stay tuned. I'm gonna be doing a full review on this. Let's put the power to the test. Zero to 100 kilometers an hour. Let's see how quick that does it in. Here we go, three, two, one, go. And we're off, traction light kicked in. I've got to turn it off. But here we go, second gear and 100 kilometers and that's around six seconds. So it's not the fastest thing, but the gears are super long. <laughs> They are very long gears though, which is actually pretty cool. So on the dirt, you can just stick it in seconds, stand up and burn, have a burning time. This is pre camshaft. Like I said, I'll be doing another review once I do the camshaft and we'll go for another zero to 100 and see, I'm so curious to see what the time will be then. It is liquid and air cooled, has a five speed gearbox, does 3.8 liters per 100 kilometers on average on the freeway. And it has a ride by wire, which sort of turned me off at the start. I wasn't really into the whole ride by wire thing. I do like a cable, I like feeling my butterfly, just opening and closing there, especially carbies. 
can't go past the carby man. But I'm actually super impressed with this ride by wire. I completely forgot that it actually was until I was gone through all the specs again. It's like, that's right. And it also saves on clutter, having all cables and everything. Saves on the cable situation. Makes it look a little bit tidier, which is, which is a nice thing. It has a tubular frame, which is pretty standard with these classic things. The front suspension is the KYB 41 millimeter forks. I feel like they're fine. Compared to like now that I've got the Fox on in the rear, you can notice the difference in the front. I don't think I'll ever change them though. I just don't think I'll be stuffed or that bothered. They're, they're fine. I'm not taking this thing crazy off-roading, you know what I mean? I've got the WR450 for that now, so this is just, it's just fine. If you have changed them though, let me know, because I'd love to hear your thoughts and if there's a review that you've done, let me know, or if you know someone that's done it. Also, let me know. The rear suspension is the KYB shocks with adjustable preload, 120 mil travel. That's the same as the front as well. And you'll see the travel when we do the brake test. And I had it right down there. The rear shocks, again, I think they're fine. If you're not taking this thing serious off-roading, if you're not going for any crazy moto adventures or anything like that, the rear shocks are fine. I have upgraded mine to the Fox shocks. And yes, there's a noticeable difference, but they are $1,600. It's not a cheap upgrade. It is nice that they're fully adjustable. When you go on on-road, off-road, you can just stiffen them or soften them up as you please. They're not a necessity. The stock shocks work fine. The front and rear brakes are Nissan single disc, two piston calipers and I think they are garbage. I've had brake fade once and that scared the crap out of me. So I, I want to upgrade them to Brembo's eventually. Brembo's are just the best. They already come out on the, the 2018 and the 2020. Nissan, I'm not, I'm not too, I'm not sold on them. I'm really not sold on them. Um, but anyway, moving on. Oh, that's right. We did a, we did a full on, we did a full on stopping test as well. So let's check that out. Thirty-seven meters. Now, one day if I end up doing the conversion, I'll redo that as well, and I'll keep you posted and informed on that transformation. ABS works fantastic. Highly recommend leaving on when you're riding on the road. When you go on off-road, turn that off. Otherwise, you just will not stop. And the traction as well, same deal, yo. So you can just hook it, baby. Get all that dirt kicking up. The size of the tank is a little bit smaller than the Scrambler 900s. Uh, I'm pretty sure they're around 16 liters or something. The street scramble is only 12. Be mindful of that. You do have a warning light, which lets you know when you're, how many Ks out? Maybe like 60, 50, 60 Ks out, which gives you enough time to get to a servo. If that happens and you're pretty far away from a servo though, just if you have a shield on, get behind that shield, man. You'll push 70 Ks easy, maybe even 80. Just try to be as aerodynamic as you can and you will cut through and you will make it, you will. Some of the extras that I just wanted to talk about, such as the, the headlight, I thought that their halogen was absolute garbage riding at night. I wouldn't do it, I don't recommend it. It's, it's just too dangerous, man, you don't see enough. So I rid that and I put a steady LED light in and this thing is so damn bright, it's so nice. It literally is like better than most cars, which is insane. It's very sharp, very crisp. You can leave it on for ages and it's not gonna drain your battery without the black running, which is cool. And also you can't flash. It's either on or off. There's no actual like ding, ding, ding. Now, as I said, the stock handlebars do come with the heated grip slots. That's why I've kept everything stocked there. I think the bars are fantastic. I don't think they need to be really changed. They are, they're solid as well. So if you drop it, they're not gonna bend in or anything like that. So there's no point in putting a brace or anything like this. They're tapered, so you don't have to, you don't have to worry about, you know, them bending in or anything like that. It looks cool, the brace, I do dig it, but. No need. I think it's worthwhile if you want to keep your heated grips there and not use any aftermarket ones. The Triumph ones are pretty damn sick and they're really easy to install. I've got a video on that as well. There it is. You can get a center stand for these. You got to buy them as an extra. They're like three or 400 bucks. There weren't any in Australia for when I did this tour. Otherwise I would have bought one. But it would be very handy to have one if you're doing a long tour as well. So you can just like boop, pop it up. If you have a flat, change it off and away you go. The same as the windshield. If you're doing a long distance, I highly recommend getting a windshield. It just saves all that wind, saves your fatigue, saves your fuel economy, and it just, you know, saves everything. And also it's got a USB port, which is sick. It's just underneath your seat. You can just charge your accessories on the fly. Use a quad lock mount charger with the wireless head. It works perfectly. It's all weather resistant now. I've got a YouTube video on that as well. Oosh. So looking at the biggest downsides for me, they would have to be the lack of power and the height. Again, not deal breakers. I'd, I'd buy this bike again, definitely. It's, it's just a fun bike, man. It is a fun bike, very easy to ride. You can hop on it and just just go to town, you know? The Scrambler is not a bike that you wanna ride fast. You hop on it and you're just like, this is sick. You feel like you're just in full control. You're having a great old time. You're comfortable. You're gonna be tearing through corners like there's no tomorrow. You're gonna just jump off road. You're gonna switch it over to off road mode. You're gonna hook through some dirt, light trails, whatever. You're gonna have a damn fantastic time. And then there's the sound. 
there's the grunt of it, the throatiness, the 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 balls. <laughs> Don't want to say it, but that's literally the only way I can explain this. And then you also have the standard Triumph little whistle and the little. And then, them combined, man. It just it feels so meaty. I love it. I love it so much. That was literally the selling point for me. I will never sell this bike. I will never sell it. A couple of common questions I'm asked: Does the exhaust burn your leg? It does not at all. You can literally ride. If you've got the heat shield on there all the way, I don't even have the heat shield where the cat used to be. It's fine. It doesn't burn your leg at all. You can literally just put your hand on it, and it won't burn. I think the hottest it gets is when you're in the middle of summer, you sit in the middle of traffic, and then your damn fans kick in, and your, your legs absolutely fry, and your right leg especially. Other than that, no. Nah. You can touch that, you can rest your leg right on it all the time. It doesn't burn at all, at all. It's actually pretty, it's pretty fancy stuff. And would I recommend the bike to a beginner? Absolutely. If you're coming off your L's and you want a bigger bike, something that's sort of more stable, it's not too fast, but you want to have fun and it's quite versatile, this is the damn bike for you, man. It is so much fun. And I dare you to like go and look for a review and find someone that says it's a horrible bike. I'm pretty sure every single review that is on YouTube right now, they all come out saying this is a damn fun bike. Slow, yes, but it is damn fun. And I, I say to you, go out to your Triumph dealer and take one for a test ride. Just take one for a test ride. So I feel like, man, I'm gone, half an hour. And then stand up on it, get a little feel, See if you can go off right a little bit. Don't damn crash the thing. And then you come back and you tell me how that went. And I guarantee you had a good time. Now the price of this thing was $14,700 Australian. It was the last one in Australia. They had a mad run out deal. So I just nabbed it. I got it. They're usually around like 17 grand, 17 and a half grand here in Australia. They're just such a solid bike. Very refined. They're a gentleman's bike. They're a hooligan's bike. You can have so much fun. And they're super reliable. I've had no issues with it whatsoever. Apart from the shift shaft, when it snapped when I dropped it. The little headlamp Triumph logo falling out in the headlamp. That was it. Which I got rid of anyway. There was a lot to get through and I hopefully I answered some of your questions that you might have been just stewing on for a while there. If you have any questions though, please let me know. Drop a line in the comments and I'll, rebu uh, blah, blah, and I'll reply back to you. It's an awesome bike, man. 16,000 kilometers and it's just getting started, hey. Honestly. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please drop a like and hit subscribe. I really do appreciate it. Uh, the support goes a long way with the channel, with everything, with the vibes, with the feels. And um, thank you so much for watching. See you guys next week. Right, check out these new goggles that just came in from EKS Brand. I'm gonna be doing a giveaway very soon for these guys. Like Daft Punk. I can't believe Daft Punk quit. What?